Witnesses that have been close to IHOP KC worship leader Misty Edwards over the years are now chiming in with some of their thoughts on her interaction with Mike Bickle over the years and, you know, really where they see the relationship between those two and maybe why Misty has been so firm in the Bickle camp since the allegations first broke out. We're going to get into all of that here in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you in the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. And for someone like me, well, it's kind of my only option. If you guys are interested, you want to know my story about how I went blind, how do I even operate my entire ministry without being able to see, I did a video, I provide it in the description, of all of my videos here that explains my entire story. So if you're interested, you can check that video out. And also, if you want to help contribute to my ministry with a generous donation, hit the super thanks button on the YT video here and make a contribution. That way it helps me greatly. I'm very appreciative for all of you who are able to do so. Let's talk here about Misty Edwards. You know, the whole Jane Doe group thing, you know, her back and forth with the advocate group that we've seen now for several months you know, the position that she has taken with her protest and appeal statement that she was never in any way a victim of Mike Bickle over all the years that she has been working with him in the ministry. Witnesses are now coming forward with some interesting information about the actual relationship between Misty and between Mike and why maybe Misty is saying the things that she is saying. And how she has been so strong on this and really, you know, has kind of, you know, slighted the actual survivors of Bickle that have come out with their stories. If you remember when Tammy Woods first gave her story, Misty was very quick to go on social media and say, you know, not I'm sorry for what you went through, Tammy. I'm sorry that, you know, this happened to you when you were only 14 with Mike Bickle. She didn't say that. Instead, what she said was, we would just like to set the record straight. Now, she's saying this on behalf of the Jane Doe group. We just want to set the record straight that we were not those women that were mentioned by Tammy Woods. Because Tammy had said that, you know, this sort of behavior was going on with Mike Bickle and all of the younger girls. So they were very quick to come out and, you know, make that, you know, defense of themselves that they were in no way associated with Bickle in that way. But remember, Mike had a tendency to manipulate people like Tammy and even TH who came out and gave her story by saying that if, you know, anything came out, you know, with the allegations and all that, make sure you just tell people that I'm a godly man. This is what he is telling to the actual women that he was involved with and the inappropriate behavior happened. So it is not out of the question that Misty could be under that same exact spell and that maybe she just hasn't come out of it yet. So, if you go back to the first Jane Doe that shared her story, if you remember, it was back in November of 2023. She talked about how Mike had used the prophecy of Diane's death and that, you know, that was going to open up the door for them to be together, right? Diane was going to die. He told people, all these different women, Diane was going to die in all these different ways, right? An earthquake and all sorts of other situations. And that God had provided a chariot for Mike to be a part of. And well, he wanted the original Jane Doe to come into that chariot with him. This was a sort of way to show them that they had a spiritual destiny, that by joining in with him in this chariot, that they were going to do some great work in the ministry together. However, what it did, and according to Jane Doe's original story, is that it basically transformed that relationship from spiritual to physical. And the chariot comments were not something that was just mentioned to the first Jane Doe. According to witnesses, this is also something that Mike Bickle had told to Misty Edwards. Now, not necessarily the prophecy about Diane's death, but that even Misty herself could join Mike Bickle in the chariot. And with other witnesses that have spoke about this, you know, he said the same thing to other women, not just Misty, telling them that they can join in his chariot. Because anytime he brought up the story about that chariot, often 
it would lead from a spiritual relationship to a physical one. And this is how the whole, you know, manipulative ways with Bickle started really with this story and how he was able to get so many of these women over the years by promising them something in the prophetic, which, you know, they would lash on to because why not? I mean, if you're going to get a, you know, a prophetic word from Mike Bickle of all people, I mean, aren't you going to want to be a part of that? I mean, you know, with his track record, I mean, they, they were mesmerized by this guy. And so witnesses are saying that this is something that Misty often heard. But with her, she just assumed that it was just an actual prophetic word. I'm going to be a part of this ministry with him, even though he was using it for devious tactics with others. She didn't see it. And Mike has been able to string her along all this time, keeping him at his side. Because remember, his his circle is getting smaller, right? And there's a lot of people that have abandoned the Bickle ship. But one person that has not done that is Misty Edwards. She has remained firm in her stance of him being this good guy, right? I mean, if you remember from the McNamara report, you know, you had the, the Jane Doe group, which I, why she talked to them, I don't even know. But she included the protest and appeal statement even in her report. And they talked about how, oh, Mike Bickle had a childlike innocence about him. You know, there's nothing. He was a little quirky at times. But I mean, hey, look, you got to expect that from these big ministers. It, it was really nothing but glowing endorsements and, you know, seals, you know, you know, all, all this positive talk about him being, you know, a wonderful boss. And, you know, they would there was nothing inappropriate about him at all in the way that he dealt with them. It, just, just very, very strange when you see the the high praise that he received. But then you have now all of these other women now coming out and sharing their stories and telling us that Mike Bickle was anything but professional, that Mike Bickle was anything but appropriate. It just doesn't add up to me that, you know, between Mike and Misty, that there wasn't something there. And not that, you know, not that Misty didn't actually, you know, take advantage of that. I'm not saying that, but I think she saw what was going on, but just didn't want to believe it. And the manipulative tactics and everything, and maybe she never desired, you know, that type of a relationship with Mike in the physical sense, but she saw what was going on. And now she's hearing all these other stories. And instead of, you know, embracing these women that have come forward she is taking a position of not wanting to hear it and attempting to shut them down, which is very concerning that she would do that. You know, where this goes from here with her is, is God only knows. But if she is under some spell, pray that she can come out of it. Because if she knows a lot more than what she's saying, I mean... That could bring this thing down even more. Remains to be seen, though, but I throw it to you for your comments and your take on this. You can do so down below. What do you think about Misty and Mike, the whole chariot manipulative tactics that Mike was using? Does Misty know more than she's, you know, that she's leading on? What do you think? What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Of course, I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines, keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on. I do it because, yes, we are in the last days, really the final hours, and Christ is coming soon. For anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer that you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision 
that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to, the, to donate to the ministry are there as well. You guys can join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news link in the description. Or you can just hit the super thanks button down below on this YT video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.